So the equation of a straight line can be written in two forms. We have the gradient intercept form and we have the point gradient form. Now, the gradient intercept form looks like this where the M represents the gradient and the C represents the y-intercept. Now, whenever you have a question where you can find or you're giving your gradient and you can find or you're giving your y-intercept, you normally use this format over here. And with that, you'll be able to get the equation of the straight line. Now, the second form, which is the point gradient formula, looks like this. Where the x1 and the y1 actually represents a point that passes through the straight line. Where your m, as usual, represents your gradient. So if you're able to calculate the value for your gradient or you're given the value of your gradient and you also have a point that passes through the equation, you can definitely use this format. After substituting those values into this format, you will simplify it to look like this at the end of it. So it starts off like this. And it's definitely going to end like that. Okay. So now let us try an example using both form and see how we can solve questions. We have this question that says, determine the equation of the straight line that passes through the points P, 1 and 2, and Q, 3 and 8, in the form of y is equals to. So now the first thing we do in a question like this for every straight line is to determine your value for your gradient. Now, finding your value for your gradient, we use the formula, which is. Then we substitute the coordinates. So the gradient of this line is m is equals to 3. So now if I'm going to use the gradient intercept format, what I write down is, so then I substitute my gradient. Then to find my y-intercept, I just need to substitute one point from what I was given. So we have p as 1 and 2 and q as 3 and 8. So I'm going to substitute p. So as you can see, your C gives you negative 1. So the equation will just be, and that's it. So this is exactly how you solved using the gradient intercept formula. Now with the point gradient formula, we will use this. And since our gradient, as we said, was 3, we understand that this here would be 3. Now, we also need to take a point. So the point we're going to take in this one is 3 and 8. That's Q. So we're going to substitute Q, which is 3 and 8, into that over there. And looking at this, we notice our answers are the same. So it doesn't matter which one you use you will still get the same answer. Just try as much as possible to use the one you're more comfortable with and you'll definitely be fine. And that's it. Parallel lines. Whenever you're working with parallel lines and analytical, we normally say that the gradients of those lines are usually equal. So what I mean by that is if line AB is parallel to line CD, we understand that the gradient that this forms, so let's call this M1, and the gradient that that forms, let's call that M2, we would say that those two gradients are equal. Let's look at an example of parallel lines and how it can be used in questions.
you have this question which says given the point a is negative 5 and 1 b is 1 and 6 c is 7 and negative 2 determine the equation of the line parallel to ac and passing through the point negative 1 and 3 write the equation in form of ax plus bx plus c is equals to 0 okay so now, just like we said before, we get the gradient. Now, this question over here is saying that the equation of the line we want to get is parallel, right? It is parallel to AC. So let's get the gradient of AC. So the gradient of AC would be... So the gradient of AC is negative 1 over 4. And like we said before, whenever the line is parallel, we understand that they have to be equal. So it would mean that our new equation would also have a gradient of negative 4. So I'm going to put this into the point gradient format. I'm substituting the point that we have, which is negative 1 and 3. Our gradient is negative 1 over 4. This here would be the equation of our straight line. Now, we, if, it, if the question asks us to find the equation of a straight line, we always try as much as possible to make sure it looks like this y is equals to mx plus c and our answer we get corresponds to that but unfortunately this question doesn't just want us to get the equation of the straight line they want it to look in a specific way so if you look at the question one more time they said they want it to look like ax plus bx plus c is equals to zero right we shouldn't have a fraction in any of our equation over here so what i should be doing in this question is first of all multiplying by my LCD, the lowest common denominator, in this case here is 4. Then I move everything to the left hand side so that I have only 0 on the right hand side. And that's it. So it looks exactly as I wanted. Whenever you have perpendicular lines in analytical geometry questions, you're still going to focus on the gradients. Now, the gradients are not equal, but the multiply to give you negative one. So what do I mean by that? So let's say we have this gradient here as M1, and we have this gradient here as M2. So if AB is perpendicular to CD, it means that the gradient of M1 times the gradient of M2 will give you negative one. It could also be rewritten as M1 is equals to the negative inverse of M2. Given the point A is negative 5 and 1, B is 1 and 6, C is 7 and negative 2, determine whether AB is perpendicular to the line 6x plus 5x is equal to 18. So now, since we're working with the line AB, let's start by getting the gradient of AB. So the gradient of AB is equals to 5 over 6. We have the equation of the line that AB is perpendicular to. So the equation of that line, as you can see from here, is... Now a straight line has to always look like this. Now the reason why it has to look like this is because it tells us what the gradient is, right? So I'm going to rewrite it in that format. Now it means that the gradient of the perpendicular line here, as you can see, is negative 6 over 5. So I take those two gradients. The first gradient I got was 5 over 6. And the second gradient that I just got here, negative 6 over 5. Then all I just need to do is multiply. 
And when I multiply this here, that cancels that out, that cancels that out. So I get negative one. Since I'm getting negative one, I definitely know they are perpendicular lines. And that's it.